Number 42. Polymers are large molecules composed of simple units repeated many times. Thus, they often have relatively simple empirical formulas. Calculate the empirical formulas of the following polymers, and then we have letter E, which is orlon. So orlon is a polymer that consists of 67.9% carbon, 5.70% hydrogen, and 26.4% nitrogen. Just to put it into perspective of what we're actually talking about, right, orlon is a brand name for a acrylic fiber. And acrylic fibers are basically like for clothes, all right? So it's not wool. It kind of has that same feel, but it's, um, it's more synthetic. It's a synthetic fiber, acrylic fiber. So that's what we're dealing with here. We're talking about a acrylic fiber, a synthetic fiber that can be made to make clothing. And that's all that a, a piece of cloth or clothing is. It's just a small empirical formula, a small chemical formula just repeated so many different times. And that's how you get the, the shirt, all right? But how do we go from a percentage to an empirical formula? Well, it's a four-step process, right? And here it is, boop. So we've done tons of these problems already if you guys are on the playlist. So if you're not and you want more practice, go check those out. But basically, we start from a percent and we end at the empirical formula, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to write down our percents on the left side here. So I have 67.9% carbon. I have 5.70% hydrogen. And then I have 26.4% nitrogen. Okay. Now, all we have to do here is just find out from the percents, I have to know how many grams I have. Well, the first thing I would do is just make sure that your total is out of 100% or very, very, very close to it. So if I have 67.9 plus 5.7 plus 26.4, yeah, I get 100%. So no percentages are lost here. But now if the total percent is 100%, I can assume that the gram sample that I have of this Orlon that I, you know, did the research on, if we did the research, was also 100 grams. So the total percentage equals the total amount of grams. If that's the case, the individual percentages equal the individual grams. So in this case, to go from percents to grams, your percent just equals the amount of grams you got. So instead of saying 67.9% carbon, that's 67.9 grams of carbon. I now have 5.70 grams of hydrogen, and I have 26.4 grams of nitrogen. And the first part is done. Now I got to go from grams to moles. We've done tons of problems on this, right? Converting from grams to moles, you have to use the periodic table. So that's why I put my periodic table up here. Your masses might be slightly different than mine, but the empirical formula at the end should be the same. So no worries on that. Um, the, the thing that we have to do, right, whenever we're converting from grams to moles is we just use a conversion factor, aka we are multiplying by a ratio. I mean, the, remember, the ratio is just going to be a number on the top and a number on the bottom, right? So I'm just going to make that multiplication for each one. And now I like to work with the units first, and then I will add my numbers in at the end. If I have grams of carbon, and I don't want grams anymore, I want to convert it into moles, I'm going to put this unit on the opposite side. If you put it on the opposite side, it will cancel. So gram of carbon goes on the bottom. I don't want gram of hydrogen, so gram of hydrogen goes on the bottom. I don't want gram of nitrogen, so gram of nitrogen goes on the bottom. And the unit that I want goes on the top. So I want moles. So in this case, I want mole of carbon. Carbon's got to go with carbon. In this conversion, I want mole of hydrogen. Hydrogen goes with hydrogen. And then mole of nitrogen, nitrogen goes with nitrogen. Now I'm going to put in my numbers, right? What are the numbers that are going to be on the top or on the bottom in the numerator or in the denominator? 
that's mass time, right? That's these decimal values. Just know that when you're using this number, it is 1.008, so for example, like hydrogen, right? It's 1.008 grams of hydrogen. These numbers go to the gram value. And these will always equal to one mole of your element. So one mole of hydrogen, one mole of carbon, one mole of nitrogen equals these numbers in grams of that element. So when you're using your periodic table to convert from moles to grams, it's always, whoop, it's always one mole of carbon, one mole of hydrogen, one mole of nitrogen, and the numbers that go here go to the grams. That's in the denominator in this case. So for grams of carbon, it's going to be 12.01. For hydrogen, it's going to be 1.008. And then for nitrogen, it's the 14.01. Now the grams cancel. Not the numbers, but just the units. And we're left with the unit that we want. Mole of carbon, mole of hydrogen, and then mole of nitrogen. Let's do the actual math. Okay, so 67... 67.9 divided by 12.01. I'm going to cut it off after a few decimals. So 5.654. And that's mole of carbon. 5.7 divided by 1.008. I get 5.655. Very, very close. That's a good thing. 26.4 divided by 14.01. I get 1.88, and that's mole of nitrogen. Okay, halfway there, guys. Now, let's go from the mole to making a mole ratio. I'm just going to drop this maybe a little bit down, maybe bring this a little bit up. Okay. So, we talked about a ratio before. Remember, a ratio is just some number divided by some other number. In this case, we have 50% of our ratio already. We have the numerator numbers, the top guys. So I'm going to take these numbers and divide it by, right, each one of them, I'm going to divide by the smallest one. Because the empirical formula, remember, is the most simplified chemical formula. It's the one with the smallest possible subscripts. So if we keep thinking of the idea of small, we will divide each number by the smallest number that we see here. So out of these three numbers, which one is the smallest? Yeah, you got it. It's the 1.88. So I'm going to take each one and divide it by 1.88. Okay. Oh, 1.89. Oh, I'm like, how do I make an 8? Okay. Now let's see what this answer is. So 5.654 divided by 1.88. At this stage of the game, you should get very, very close to a whole number. And we do. We get 3.007, yada, yada, yada. But it's very, very close to 3. So I can say 3 moles of carbon. 5.655 divided by 1.88. I get the same idea here. So I have 3 moles of hydrogen. And then 1.88 divided by 1.88 is just 1, right? Okay, and that mole ratio is done. Now all we got to do is just take these numbers that I just got and convert it into the empirical formula. Let's start at the top and work our way down, right? Our empirical formula would be a carbon, and I have three of them. So I have to put a three down here. The next element in my formula is hydrogen, and I have three of them as well. So I got to put a three there. And then the next element is nitrogen. I have one of them. So you can put a one here, but you don't have to, right? If we don't see a number next to an element in a formula, that just means that we have one of them. And this is your final answer. What do you think? Guys, hope this helped. This was easy peasy. All right. Just remember the progress. Okay. And we finally finish it. All, all four steps are checked off. So we got this. All right. And I know you guys got this. Keep studying hard. I'm here with you every step of the way. All right. So 
Let's ace those quizzes and tests. Let's do well on those homeworks. And I believe in you guys. You guys rock. If you want to hit the subscribe button to help us out, that would, you know, mean a lot to us. And thank you so much for that. All right. I'll see you all in the next lesson. Have a great day.